the press bar. Well, I mean, I feel like everyone's kind of competing for a spot right now. I mean, there's plenty of spots open, and uh, I mean, everyone wants their spot on the team, and they're willing to fight for it. So, I mean, a lot of guys that uh, that are really just uh, just getting after it. Well, being a senior, I got to look after like sophomore, junior year. I got to look after all the seniors, how they acted. So I basically know know what I'm doing and know how to treat these younger guys. So they, when they're seniors, they know how to treat the rest, and it keeps going. Uh, I think it's just an awesome experience, especially like Hunter Central Baseball. Is, I mean, it's had a reputation of being a top program for years, but now to actually be playing in it, it's just it's even more fun. You just want to help the team any way you can and help help grow the the program and the legacy here, and and hopefully it'll carry over to the next years when some of the younger guys come up. There's no superstars on this team. It, it's, a, it's a team of really good baseball players, really good friends, and I think that's the kind of the approach that they've taken so far. Um, like I said, I've loved the teams that have come through before, but there's no real big egos right now, and it's a team that's really working together right now, and it's a versatile team. I have guys that are senior guys that are willing to move around three, four different positions on the field during a single game if they have to, just to make it work. Um, so I think that's what you're going to get from us this, this year, a bunch of guys that can play together as a unit um, that are willing to do anything. Hello and welcome to HCT, HCTV's coverage of 100 and Central Baseball on opening day. I'm Josh Uhas alongside Tyler Rodriguez and it's going to be a nice day of baseball, won't it? Yep, 75 degrees here, Josh. It's a beautiful day. Great day to open the season for the Red Devils playing against Hillsborough, a team they beat twice last year. This is a Red Devils team, Josh, that is ranked 18th right now in the top 20 preseason rankings. Ridge ranked 10, another team in the division. So a lot of competition, again, for this team. It's always going to be competitive, but they lost a lot of seniors, a lot of important players as well. as a lot of new faces out there, so we'll see how the team fares in week one. Yeah, and Central's always been a very strong program, especially under Coach Cousy, especially last season coming off a, a visit to the Group 4 final. Unfortunately, they did lose and that included a bunch of the seniors that they lost, which was included like Kyle McCoy, Nick Ferry. Yep, Vassinelli, Patino. Fisher. Yep. There's there a ton of seniors on that team, so we'll see the new batch of seniors come in, and we'll see how they play out. Well, basically every player was a senior that started except for Mike Attiliano. You see a Hobie move to shortstop today. The Seton Hall commit as a junior. Played third a lot last year, but he's at short today, taking the position of Fascinelli as we get ready for the first pitch and Augusta on the hill. And first up, number 12, Avery Whitney, the center fielder for Hillsboro. First pitch, that will be taken low. We'll see how Augusta tries to attack this Hillsboro offense as this game goes on because it's the first game of the season. You don't really know how you're going to play, how the team plays together, and you don't really know who you're facing either. Yeah, this team had a great preseason, though, Josh. 4-0 in preseason. They're, they should be feeling pretty confident. This is a great a great central team again. Still pretty young, but we'll see how Augusta plays to that. Yeah, and they definitely have some depth in the pitching. They have a bunch of pitching that they can go to, and today they obviously go with Augusta. As that one's fouled back. Yeah, one big blow for the, them, though, is James Scott, who is really was supposed to be the third man last year behind Stoller, almost overtook him. He's been hurt for a while, so hopefully he can come back soon, get back to throwing. Yeah, and he's a pivotal part of this central team as he's had, I believe, 70 strikeouts and about 50 strikeouts in his last two years. And he led the team in strikeouts last year. That pitch launched foul to the right. He'll certainly be, if when he's healthy, the ace for this team. 
and any help is needed, especially with the tough Skyland Conference that they're in. Every single conference win is helpful, and every just win in general is extremely helpful for Central. So once again fouled back, Whitney putting up a little fight to start off this game. The Hillsborough only got two hits in their last game against the Menhem. They lost 3 nothing, so they need to get the bats moving. And they had a chance. I believe they had bases loaded at that point, but they were unable to capitalize. So even with a game where they don't put up many hits, they're able to keep themselves in the game as Nick Augusta is able to strike out Whitney for the first out of the game. A good start there for Augusta. Yeah, and that's a start you need. You need to get hot early, especially opening day. You want to get that momentum going. Yeah, as a young pitcher as well. As number 24, Andrew Advani, the left fielder for Hillsborough, will step in the box. So once again, that one's taken low, 1-0. Vani is a sophomore, one of the three sophomores on that Hillsborough team. As this one launched into left center, Win and Yasana is going back. Win falls to the ground. Yasana will pick it up. Throw in, and he will have a double. A one out double for Andrew Advani gets the Hillsborough Raiders started. Wow, that was. He got a hold of that one there, Josh. Win almost made the web gem, but Advani, he was a player that got a hit in their last game. He's picking off where he left, but he's two for four now on the year. Yeah, and it's completely opposite to how their first game went in that 3-0 loss against Mendham. They're starting off pretty, they start off with a hit here, and obviously they only had two hits in the last game, and it took them until the seventh last time to get a hit. As Augusta, look back at the runner. Now we'll really see how Augusta works with some pressure. Runner on second. Yeah. So he feels. That Good. pitch taken. It's a big lead over there from Advani at second as well. Definitely going to have to keep an eye on him as Soren Greger will keep a little bit of a look there. It's Contiliano also. Talented sophomore Soren Gregor. That one also taken. A lot of takes so far in this game, but we saw that if you get the right pitch, you're able to knock that one into the gap. Yeah, there's a big outfield here, a lot of space for these batters to hit. It's not to display the the speed of Central. They do have some speed in the outfield to be able to cover that ball. We saw Yasana is able to go from left field, all, get all the way over there and stop it from maybe being a triple. Yeah, he did good to back up win, sold out as you expect, but it's always going to be a tough play. And when he's a player that really has worked hard all off season in the gym, in the cages, was on the team last year, didn't get a huge opportunity because of the senior heavy lineup, but this year is his chance. As Augusta gets ready to pitch once again. That pitch taken. That'll be strike and make it a 0-1 count. Hillsboro trying to capitalize off that double. They've kind of become stagnant a little bit. It's Augusta. That one's missed low. Vani will take his lead, Contiliano behind him. Contiliano will get back to his position as that pitch, as Lindari will go for the back pick, Vani able to get back. Jimmy Lindari, a player committed to Scranton University, one of Mr. Johnson's favorite schools, both of his sons go there, a player last year, Lindari got some time when Padre is out with COVID, but he is really the main man this year behind the plate for the Red Devils. So once again, the pitch from Augusta. That one will find the zone. Nice pitch to make it a 2-2 count here. It's a crucial, 
crucial pitch. Two, two, two outs, runner on second. A lot of twos. They struck out the last batter, see if you can get the three Ks. Oh. Augusta misses inside as this will go full. Full count, two outs now. Augusta trying to keep it, keep the count together, try and find the zone and not lose the batter. Although there is an open base, so it's not the worst. It'll create a force out. The pitch from Augusta. Swung and missed. Augusta with another strikeout. Wow, yeah, he's looked confident. Three strikeouts for every out of the inning. Good work from him to start off. Gave up the one hit, but still pretty good for him. He pitched last time. Central played Hillsboro last year. I think it was the first game he pitched, and that time he was the winning pitcher, 77 pitches, 3.2 innings, gave up five hits, three runs, all of them were earned. Three walks, so he had seven strikeouts that game, so he's got three already. His ERA was 5.73. And that's a strong start that Central needed. Even though he gave up that big double, he was able to cap. He was able to bounce back and get that strikeout to get out of the inning. And now the Central offense will get ready to go out against Max Romanock, number 27 for Hillsboro. Romanock is a junior, I, and he didn't really get any time last season. So this will be the first look that Central will get at him on varsity level. We'll see how he attacks this central lineup. Obviously, we know central is a very strong program. And especially last year, they were able to get to that group four final. And obviously, the offense is looking to keep that up. And with a program like central, it's hard to keep them off the bases. Yeah, I mean, last year, their lineup, one through nine, it just was, it had, had everything. You had average, it had power, had players that constantly getting on base, batting 300 plus. I mean, almost every player, I think, was batting 300 plus last year for them. So there's a lot of hits in that lineup this year. Well, like we said, they're, they're missing some of those big players in that lineup. Patino, Fisher, some players like that. So we'll see, see what happens with some of these younger fellas coming in, see if they can fill those holes. Yeah, and we've seen, we see some of the holes filled. Uh, we've seen Soren getting a starting job. We've seen McGann is also starting. He'll be starting at first today. And obviously with a mix of seniors who may not have gotten a chance to play last season because of that group of seniors that we've mentioned before. So we'll see how this lineup meshes together. We'll see what Coach, Co what Coach Cousy sees in this team and how he builds the lineup as the season goes on. Yeah, well, it's Contiliano leading off. He's really the only player last year that got significant minutes in this team. So see if he can start things off for the Red Devils. Led the team in hits last year in RBIs. Yeah, and in 99 at-bats, he had a 384 average, had 38 hits. He had one homer, which was one of the couple homers that were on this team. I believe he's the only one left on the team that had a homer that year. Most of those home runs were seniors. I believe Chase Fisher was the one that led the team. I think he had three. Patino had one as well. As Mike Contiliano will drive this one, this one to left, and that one will be brought in. Yeah, love to see the aggression though. He's gonna get the bat swing, get it going early. Got a hold of it, but a bit unlucky. Yeah, that one unfortunately went right to Advani. But it's nice to see for Coach Cousy that the team is being aggressive and making contact with it off the rip. As now we will see Soren Gregor, the sophomore. As that one will be fouled back. It'll be interesting to see how both coaches manage their bullpen especially because it's the first game of the season. You want to be careful with the rest throughout the season, but you also want to see what you have and try and win the first game, at least for Central, win your first game. Now, obviously, Hillsborough's already played their first game, which well, was also a away game. Yeah, remember, Josh, Central have Ridge tomorrow. It's going to be a huge game, 18 versus 10 in the state, so we'll see what they decide to do. Yeah, and Central will definitely try to look to climb up the rankings as the season goes on. Pitch from Romanock taken inside. Count goes to three and one. Now three one is a very interesting count because it it's a very good hitting 
hitting uh, count. And obviously, if he misses, you just get an easy walk. As it looks like now it's going to 3 2. Scoreboard was a little off. Yeah, full count now. I mean, 3 1, you got the green light. Ooh, that one's foul. That one fouled to the left side. Yeah, 3 I mean, such a sworn Greg, he's a talented player. He's a player. Josh, that put on a lot of size and muscle in this offseason, grew a lot as well. Yeah, and that's something that coaches obviously see. They see the effort that you put in, and that's how we got to the spot. Is that one's grounded the second. Yeah. That one fielded easily, not thrown just, to first by Liam a, Gallagher. Not just a talent baseball, that size. And that's something that well, what I heard was lacked in Kyle McCoy, where some of the scouts were worried of how skinny he was. He was talented, but didn't have the size of some of these other boys on this team out. It's a team that really is in the gym a lot. As now Andrew Wynn, the center fielder, number 16, will step into the box against Romanock. First pick to win. That one knocked to right field. This one high. Right fielder on it, and he'll Ooh. make the catch. Almost looked like he lost his, lost his footing for a second. That was Jake Batagli's number 21 for Hillsborough as he'll end the inning as we end the first inning tied 0-0 still. Yeah, it's been a... Uh... It's Romanock, I think, a nice, easy inning for him. But, like I said, Augusta looked good with the three strikeouts. Like I said, last year he pitched against his team. It's a team he knows, Josh. Had seven strikeouts against them last year. So, see what we can do in the second inning. But both pitchers looking strong so far. And we've seen a difference in the approaches of each team. We saw Hillsborough was willing to take more pitches while... Central was more aggressive. We saw them swing more early in the count. Now, obviously, Soren's at bat was a little bit different, but they were able to get aggressive early. And as the game goes on, that pressure gets onto Romanock and whatever pitcher they bring in. And Augusta, obviously, pitching today. He pitched a little bit last year in seven and a third innings. He at a 5.73 ERA. He also hit a little bit. Hit in his 12 at bats, 417 average. He'll be the pitcher slash DH today. And we'll see if maybe he can help himself out in this game. That's obviously something that it's kind of re it's removed from the MLB pretty much with the universal DH. But in high school sports, two-way players are very open. I believe Jared because Jared is a two-way player. There's obviously a ton in high school sports as high school high school players are very athletic they can do basically yeah. both things yeah Casella last year was a utility man played wherever pitched a lot same thing as Logan Mason so Augusta's one like that too but I think this really is where he wants to be on the hill throwing and having those utility players are extremely helpful as Graham Ross the first baseman step into the box yeah, Ross pitched, was the losing pitcher against Mendham. Also got a hit that game. Gave up two earned runs. The pitch from Augusta. That one will bounce low. The count will move to two and one. One and one. Augusta. This one taken once again. That one a little bit outside. It's hard for us to see from here, but some of these look very close from our point of view. Obviously, we're, we're only like 300 feet away or something. Yeah, it seems like he's slightly missing off that outside corner. Obviously, every ump has different kind of tendencies. As this Ooh. one will be knocked towards second, fielded cleanly by Soren. The throw is a little off right. and began unable to save it as probably be scored as an error on Soren. Yeah, unlucky from Soren Gregor there. Did well to knock it down, but couldn't get the throw. Augusta almost head off his glove, maybe threw off Gregor at second base, changing the flight of the ball slightly. May have lost a little bit. Of, may have, like, rushed the throw a little bit. Obviously, I've done that before in my playing career. I've yep, so have I, rushed the throw, and then it just kind of sort. It just kind of floats up and away from you. <laughs> Mr. Johnson never did, huh? Well, I mean... Imagine Mr. Johnson and uh, Mr. Johnson could have gone pro probably. <laughs> Mr. Johnson was a DH in high school. That's why. DH in high school. Wow. The catcher, number 15, Alex Ryling, 
will be in the box as he takes a strike. Now a common thing with hitters is take the first pitch a lot. Although sometimes you'll see some people, some players get aggressive on the first pitch. If you get a great pitch, especially like a fastball down the middle that you can't really resist, sometimes you take the swing. But a lot of time coaches want you to just take the first pitch and see what they're throwing. As the count goes to 0-2, as Augusto, the runner on first, will try to get an out. Maybe even turn two here as Cotiliano playing closer to second base. The pitch, this one hit right to Cotiliano as that one bobbled by Soren and that one they'll get the out at second but unable to get it on off the transfer and get in safely at first as Nolan Collison, number five, the third baseman for Hillsborough will step in. Yeah, Gregor Soren Gregor looking a bit shaky there. Got the out but again couldn't control the ball. He's gonna get his feet under him here. And he is a sophomore, so he'll have a few years to get into the system. And obviously, it's the first game on varsity. So it's a lot of pressure and a lot of, especially with the runner on first and how quick everything plays out, especially on a varsity level. But Soren is a great player, and we'll see how he uh, bounces back. It's Augusta, prepare to pitch once again. One out, runner on first. Pitch will miss outside. We'll go to one and one. Again, holding the runner on first. So we're gonna miss back pick attempt. Dari again. Dari being extremely aggressive so far with the back pick attempts, trying to catch Hillsborough sleeping and get him off guard. I don't know if Mr. Johnson likes that he's in his Scranton uniform today. He's going to Scranton. I don't know if he knows. I think Casella as well will be going there next year, too. Augusta gets ready once again. Two strikes. As Collison will look to fight it off. Augusta, the pitch, fouled back. A couple long at bats here for Augusta. We've seen in both innings now. Yeah. Hillsborough is really working his count, so we'll probably see more of the bullpen here today. It's Augusta, once again. That pitch swing and a miss, and once again another strikeout for Augusta. Augusta getting the strikeout pitches working so far. He's been able to get some swing and misses, get some takes. He's up to four strikeouts already in this game. Wow nearly every out as Augusta two outs runner on first he'll look to get out of this inning as that bunt attempt goes foul that's Liam Gallagher second baseman it's interesting uh, the bunt with two outs but it kind of catches your team off guard because you don't typically think that they're gonna bunt with two outs you think that's more of like a one out no out situation trying to advance the runner so that you can get the next batter an opportunity but it also is a good chance to get a hit as Logan Escamilla is playing normal depth, so a bunt will be pretty effective in getting on base if he places it right. Augusta with the pitch. This one foul to the left side. So the count will go to 0-2 once again. And we'll see what Augusta goes to here. Obviously, he has the strikeout pitch going so far. We'll see if he can get it once again. Yeah, I think he just want to get out of this inning. It's been a long one for him. But that error, and now it's long at bat. Ooh, I and say, called good. strike three. Gallagher, a little bit surprised by it and a great job by Augusta so far up to five strikeouts on this game and has been really dominant so far but his pitch count is going to be something to watch as, yep, it's a bit high. as Hillsborough has been working the count and they've been having longer at bats and we'll see how Central will go up against Romanock once again we'll see if they try to work his count more or if they stay with the same strategy they've been going with staying aggressive
Jimmy Landari will be the leadoff hitter in this inning. As we've seen behind the plate, Landari's been extremely aggressive trying to get some back picks, and unfortunately it's been unsuccessful so far, but we'll see how, throughout the season how aggressive he stays and see if he finds success with the back picks. Back picks can often be very, very dangerous, especially if you miss the throw, runner gets an easy base. So, just look at the weather right now, Josh. We got this wind's really picking up 10 miles per hour now. It looks like it's a, a northeast coming from the northeast. And we'll see how this affects the carry of the ball. Now, obviously, some factors that go into the carry of the ball is elevation, and the wind is also a big factor. So, we'll see if it benefits the hitters throughout this game or if it will go against the hitters. Sundari so with one strike on him. Knocked this down to third base. Collison fields it. Throw to first. The stretch. Looks like he came off the bag. Lindari will get on to first. Collison, an excellent hockey player. Josh, we were talking about him, recognizing that name. Yeah, I got a chance to... I saw. I got to see him when broadcasting Central against Hillsborough in the, in the NJSIA tournament. Unfortunately, Central did fall to Hillsborough that day, but... Collison was a star for that hockey team, and we'll see if he does that. has that same effect on the baseball field. Yeah, Nick Stout, another hockey player also on this central roster. Mandari will take his lead. Bunt, this one down the line, successful to get the runner over, and he beats it at first. Wow. A great bunt by Jared Casella. Some, something that he, he did very well last year, Casella. And now runners on first and second. Romanok already in some trouble. So now Caleb McGann will come in, the junior. Another player been in the lab a lot. He's been on a lot of size. Big power man. See if he can clean up these bags here. Yeah, and that'll it's definitely a big role, especially coming from where last year Chase Fisher was filling that role. And now we'll see how Caleb McGann will fill it today. It's the first pitch taken. Central look to capitalize on this. Obviously, Romanok will look for the double play. The pitch, swing and a miss. These wind's picking up, isn't it, Josh? Wow. Yeah, it definitely is, as McGann will look to fight, fight it off with two strikes here. Romanok, this one knocked towards short. So they'll turn wow. they'll successfully turn two, but the runner will advance to third. That's nice with the bare hand there, Josh. Yeah, that's a tough play to make, and it seems like a little bit of trouble on the flip so far in this game. We've seen Gregor, yeah, struggle. We with saw that. Soren have issues, and right just there, we saw issues for Hillsborough and Liam Gallagher there. No, I don't, didn't look like too many issues there with the bare hand, huh? Josh? Yeah, that was pretty nice. Still though, they got the runner to third, two outs. And now Nick Augusto will look to add look to help himself out here. As I said earlier, he had in his twelve at bats he was hitting four seventeen, so we'll see if he helps himself out here. He's able to get a knock and get that run in. Swing and a miss as goes to O two. We'll see what We'll see what Augusta's two-strike approach is here. Now, obviously, on the mound, he has a great two-strike pitch sequence, as we've seen throughout this game with his five strikeouts. But we'll see what he does at the plate. That one missed outside. One and two. It's a good job by Ryling, able to get over there, not let it get to the backstop. From Romanok. This oh. one popped to right field. Tracking it over to the side. And successful is Jake Pataglis again as Romanok is able to get out of the jam and keep this game scoreless through two. Unlucky for the Red Devils that inning. Some good hitting. The bunt to advance the runner. Then again, not, not really much he did wrong. I mean, it was a, it was a good hit. 
good contact from him, just in a bad spot, and then couldn't get Lundari into home. Yeah, we saw the bat start to continue to pick up as we've seen the aggressive attack of Central start to work, and we saw Hillsborough when they started to attack early, they were able to find some success off Augusta. Obviously, Augusta was able to get out of the inning pretty well. And we'll see, especially with the double play balls, we'll have to see how that plays out because there's been a little bit of a problem there for both sides. And Augusta, in his seven and a third innings, had 12 Ks. He's already at five, so should be set for a way better season than last. Obviously, last season filled with a bunch of other players, especially the seniors filled in that staff. There was Stoller, was McCoy kind of eating those innings. Yep. Yeah, and also he's just a better pitcher than he was last year. He's improved a lot. You see last year was a bit wild. I hit a couple bats, hit, hit some, uh, some batsmen. He threw a lot of pitches every inning. He's trying to try to be a bit more efficient, get out innings a bit quicker. But like you said, you know, he's not giving us many hits, as many runs so far. So hopefully he can keep that up and keep the strikeouts coming. Yeah, and that'll definitely help out the rest of the pitchers for Central. The less pitchers they have to use, the better. Yeah, especially for that big game tomorrow they're looking at. I think Baird maybe. I I think it would be Baird as the starter for the next game. Yeah, with no Scott Baird really is the go-to guy here. Only real player other than Scott that pitched last year. Ravi Varma they still have is a great option. And Baird, Baird and Scott were also some of the only people who saw some some play in their sophomore years as well yep. two years ago. Of course, if Augusta needs to needs a rest in this one. They have Schultz up in in the bullpen if that's what's needed. But so far, I'm just going to let him go here. So Gusto will get ready to start the third inning. Jake Pataglis in the boxes. This one's launched to left field. Yasan is tracking it. He'll get under it and make the catch for the first out. Yeah, luckily that sun's behind him there, Josh. And maybe the win was a factor, but a good play from him. It's a good job to just track the ball, not lose it. Obviously, sometimes it's weird. Like the clear skies can be the most dangerous ones because the clear blue sky it's so light you kind of lose track of where the ball goes a good job from Jack too tracking it as well it's Augusta gets ready against Avery Whitney who will come in for the second at bat that one misses out or will be called outside for a strike a little bit of a late call there by the ump the count will go 0-1 Augusta with the pitch one miss inside. We'll see how how Hillsborough tries to attack Augusta and how Augusta tries to attack Hillsborough in the second ABs and a lot of times it's not the first time you face the guy that you see the success. It's a lot of times the second or the third time you go through the order that you see the kind of hit start to flow because you kind of get used to what pitches are thrown. You kind of see get to see how like the fastball runs, how the breaking balls break. That pitch misses low. Yeah, Hillsborough seems to be a team as well that gets going kind of late, so we'll see how that plays out. But they got off just a good start in that first inning. You see if they can get back where they left up at the top of the order. And we've seen some some hits in the outfield. Is this one hitting to center? Win under it. Make the catch. Two outs. Win a very quick player. He's used a lot last year as a, a pinch base runner, but this year, of course, in the starting lineup, earned it as well. It's looked pretty good so far. It's now Andrew Advani, the left fielder, will step in. 
Augusta. We'll try to make this a quick one, two, three inning. That one misses outside. Augusta gets ready to pitch once again. Once again, missed low. Just a bit consistent in Gusta. When he gets it going, he's really on fire. Yeah, we've seen in this, especially in this game, we've seen he's a, when he's able to get it going, he's able to keep that control together, but he's still having some of those problems from last year, a little bit of control problems, but has yeah. been very strong with his pitches so far as it's only allowed that. Oh, look at that, right as we say, it, look at that a bit high. Count will go to three and zero now on Andrew Devani. He's looking for something good. He got that hit against him last time. Seems to have Augusta's number in a great spot for Devani. It's most likely going to be a take from Devani. So, but three zero count could be swinging. Oh, I bet he wish he pulled the trigger on that one. Uh, yeah, oftentimes with hitters, especially like three zero counts, you're usually just trying to make the pitcher beat themselves you know they're going to just try and find it try and hit the zone with a fastball they're not really going to try and trick you too much now 3-1 they will try to trick you a little bit he's able to get a like half swing there to make it a full count yeah, he's, he's fought back well in this at bat here Let's see if Augusta can just finish it and that's the battles in baseball that are so unique is the 3-0 counts how each side battles whether the batter takes the 3-0 or he swings 3-0 as Augusta full count this one hit right to short, Good play and a Cantiliano. great play by Cantiliano. That one got towards his feet. Is able to keep his composure and bring that one in. He made a couple great plays last year, Cantiliano, a great fielder as well as a great batter. Yeah, and that's that's what he adds to the central team and why he was involved last year and why he's involved this year as well. He's been an X factor for this team and especially will be this season. That's why he's going to Seton Hall as well, the Pirate. Leading off this inning will be the left fielder Kyle Yasanis, number seven for Central, as the Romanok will continue. Yasanis excelled at the JV level. This is a step up for him now as a senior. Let's see how he fares in his first at bat. And he has some speed, so if he gets on base, something to watch out for. Win as well has some very good speed. We also saw Casella have that kind of that little infield hit fielder's choice so we've seen some of the speed from central as well throughout this game and we've seen some pop from both sides we've seen them knock it into the outfield a little bit and that's something that each coach is going to be watching very closely because even though they're not hits they're something they're good contact so you always kind of know when the good contact is because even if you haven't given up a run you may be getting into a little bit of trouble and the second you get in trouble you'll know that you'll be able to make some good contacts, which makes it tough for the the defensive team. Yusanis, step into the box. Romanok, the first pitch, misses low, bounces that one. Yeah, Romanok looked a bit more shaky last inning. Giving up those, like you said, those good contact, giving up some runners on base. And that one missed outside again, so 2-0. and out. See what he does here. I expect a swing here on 2-0 and out if it's a good pitch. That one able to find the outside of the zone for a strike, or at least outside from our view. That looked, that looked, yeah, that looked like a ball it, to me, I'm not sure. Though. It's difficult to see from over here as that one be in the dirt in this 3-1 count. 3-1 counts are usually, if you get your pitch, you just try and drive it. Because your only loss is you just go down to 3-2. The 3-1. This one, knocked towards third. Collison, throw to first. Make the play and get the out. So Romanok gets the first out of the inning on Yasanis As Logan Escamilla, number eight, the third baseman for Central, will step in. Escamilla, player, last year he's going to Lycoming University to play his baseball next year. 
a great, good, capable baseball player. Didn't get a huge chance last year, but expect big things from him. He also, takes the first pitch strike. He's also one of my colleagues. We work at a baseball field in the summer together. Josh sweeping it, lining it. I used to play with him as well a long <laughs> time ago. Back in those Reddington, Tewksbury days. Escamilla, take that pitch. He's a stud back then. Still is now. Count to 0-2. Romanock trying to get this inning going once again. Is this one knocked to right field? Oh. That won't get over the outfielder's head. Escamilla running to second. That'll be at least a double. Digging for three, and he'll stop short. They'll, oh, no. And they'll back pick him. Escamilla got a little too aggressive there. And oh. got caught right between second and third. Well, I think Escamilla there is great contact. The right fielder was very, very shallow. And I just think just keep going to third, but just got caught in two minds. Very unfortunate for him. Maybe Coach Jacuzzi. May have been a miss sign, or it may have been originally go to third, because sometimes the play can change in an instant based on yeah. a guy's arm especially. Like, if a guy has a good arm, but especially early in the season, we don't really know much about either team. You get you don't really know whose arm is strong this year as people have developed. Yeah, I think I think the shot initially was the third, then everyone said stop. So that And that's always so off. tough because you get basically pinned between second and third and there's nothing you can really do. No. Your best chance is just to try and beat him to the bag, but Escamilla was unable to, but it was still a great knock, able to get it right over the right fielder's head. Central is starting to hit that sweet spot, starting to get some promising signs to get some runs on the board, getting some good hits, some good at-bats. Gatiliano, 3-1 count. Romanock with the pitch, miss inside, and Gatiliano will walk. Gatiliano last year had nine stolen bases, according to NJ.com, so speed is definitely going to be a factor to pay attention to. They'll try to pick him off there, able to get back. It's the first pickoff attempt we've, one of the first pickoff attempts we've seen from Romanock in this game. Soren. First pitch, this one lifted up to center field. That one will be brought in. And that will end the inning. Game still tied 0 0 in the fourth. Top of the fourth inning, Augusta will stay in the game here as we'll get ready for the action to get back going. Augusta's been really good so far, so has Romanock. It's been a pitcher's duel so far. So we can see Yasan's getting some swings out in the outfield a little bit. Every player has done that, get the little practice swings in. Yeah. Gotta, you gotta do something to pass the time. 
especially in the outfield sometimes it can get a little bit a little bit quiet but in this game hasn't really been too quiet in the outfield there's been a lot of balls that have been hit the outfield uh, infield really has been the quieter of the two for sure Cole Jaro missed that pit missed that swing for the first strike as Augusta pitch with an 0-1 count that pitch missed outside again to go to one and one Augusta misses that pitch low that one bounced in the dirt a little bit as now the count two and one as Augusta look to try and get the first out of the inning Swing and a miss. 2-2. Two, two. Good pitch there from Augusta. Great speed on that one. He's able to get it. He's able to just drive that ball past him. And sometimes there's nothing you can do to beat just a strong, fast fastball. And some fastballs obviously have run as he gets the swing and a miss there and another strikeout. That puts him at, I believe, six. He's got him reaching, too. Remember, he had those seven strikeouts last time against Hillsborough. Should probably get more already at six here. Yeah, and starting a season strong, and especially helpful for a game like this where not very high scoring so far. Obviously, that can change in an instant, but so far, nothing. As Matthew Westcott will step in, the DH. Yeah, it only takes one in baseball. Just one pitch, one swing, change the game. Yeah, and if you can just put together a few hits... The game can change in an instant just if you're able to just pick up the momentum in a game just pick up a couple of hits you're able to get back into a game that you may not have been in or you're able to just take the lead pitch to Westcott swing and a miss 0-2 oh it's Augusta Look to add to a strikeout total. The 0 2. This one hit to short. Cantiliano brings it in. Throw to first. That throw is off. McGann unable to save it. A nice try, though. Try to go behind the back. A yeah, tough, tough feeling there in the, on this field. In the infield, it's not great. It was Cantiliano was telling me the other day. Fastinelli, he, he was a pretty decent fielder himself, so again, a tough position to replace. I believe he's at Bucknell University. Yep, he's at Bucknell, another D1 player for Central, loads of them out there. I believe Fastinelli started opening day for Bucknell, as that one hit to right field. Casella will easily make the play. Like we said, Casella going to Scran, many players for 100 Central right now at Scran, many more going as well. As we'll see if Augusta is able to prevent any runs off of the air. As two outs and Graham Ross, the senior first baseman for Hillsborough, will step in. The pitch, swing and a miss. Very small leg movement from Augusta with the runner on first. Yeah, and that's that's something with pitchers. They obviously you can't go with your full windup as yeah. it takes way too much time. So you kind of try to find a way to make your motion shorter, but still keeping the same mechanics. So this one popped up. Soren Gregor move back and get that one to end the inning. So always, good job by Augusta. Always tough to go back and make that play, Josh, but he does a great job there to locate that ball and bring that one in. Yeah, especially when you have to go over your shoulder. Not, exa not exactly an easy catch, especially for an infielder, because you have to... It's kind of hard to track the ball from that position. As Augusta, four scoreless innings so far. And we'll see how each team is going to manage their pitchers. We see Romanok will stay in the game. And we'll see if Kuzi decides to keep in Augusta for the next inning, or if he will... Go to the bullpen. Most likely, it'll keep him in with how he's performing. Oh, we'll probably see during this inning if Tate LaFerrera comes over here and, and gives anyone reps, but I think he's looking pretty good, so just let him go. I 
Romanox looks strong so far, but we've seen some good contact from Central. We've seen some base runners as well. They just were unable to capitalize so far. So they left that one runner in scoring position before. Andrew Wynn, center fielder, will lead off this inning against Romanock. We've seen in this game that Hillsborough still having the same kind of run scoring issue as the last game, not able to score until late in the game. Wynn originally showed bunt, pulls it back, but still a strike. It counts 0 and 1. Yeah, Central usually a team that puts up a lot of runs. Last year against Hillsborough, they put up 12, 8 in the first game, 4 in the second. And in games like these where it's 0-0, zero, zero, the small ball sometimes is extremely helpful, which may be why they were showing bunt there on the first pitch. And and especially with the speed of win as well. Over the last five games, Josh, they've, they've scored 33 runs against Hillsborough. Beat them five straight, 33-7 on aggregate. Yeah, and Hillsborough last season were 7-16, and 16, although six of their wins were in the Skyline Conference, although the record was 6-12. and 12. Central, obviously, 25-5, and 15-2 and in Skyline Conference play. Oh, look, here we go. Some movement here in the bullpen, it looks like you called it. Looks like it's Schultz. That pitch miss outside, and it'll take the walk. Win a speedy base runner on first. As now Jimmy Lindari will step in. So we'll see some movement in the bullpen. Jack Brunetti, Ryan Schultz Looks coming like back here. Yep. It'll be Ryan Schultz warming up in the bullpen. Pick attempt. Get in safely. Showing bunt, pulls it back, the steal attempt, throw in and he's safe, a great steal by Andrew Wynn, his first of the season. First of many, I could tell you probably, Josh. Yeah, especially with the speed he's shown, running the first, able to beat one out, and right there, able to get the stolen base. And that's crucial, getting runners in scoring position in a scoreless game like this. In a game like this, any run counts as the bunt showed once again. We'll pull it back. So win we'll back up to second. See if Romanock is able to work out of it this time or if Central is able to capitalize here. Win will take his lead. Seems like his strategy is throwing off Romanock here. He's having trouble hitting the zone with the, with the bat over it. Yeah, and that's something when you start to, especially later in games, your control is a little bit worse, and then you add on the factor of there's a runner in scoring position, and you can't really let him score. It's definitely a tough thing. As they try to backpick Win. that one gets a little bit, moves a little bit away from them, but Win will stay at second. They got to be careful. They throw that one too far. Get that one away. Win could easily get the third, maybe even home if it's really bad. He's got that speed. So Romanock step off, and it looks like they call a balk. So Win will get third. Win is able to get into Romanock's head, and now he'll take third. A crucial spot for Central. Just a base hit, or even a gr a good grounder will probably score a win with his speed. This is a crucial spot in the bottom of the, f in the bottom of the fourth for Central. Yeah, well, Hillsborough's coach got to tell him just to focus on the, on the on the batter right now. So Romanock misses the zone again. As Romanock this inning seen a little bit more of a control issue as the count is three and one. So this one, driven foul to the right side, hit hard. We'll see how Romanock 
approaches this 3-2 count. The pitch from Romanok. And that one will miss as Lindare will take first. We'll see if he tries to steal with the first and third. Yeah, usually a common strategy at this level, Josh. See what he does, though. Yeah, it's usually a common thing because when they throw it to second, then the runner on third can just run to home. Now, a lot of times the catchers will kind of fake the throw to second and then watch the runner at third. And sometimes it'll catch the runner off guard. Oftentimes it doesn't, but it's always worth the shot. Looks like they're giving Landari a courtesy runner as well so he can get his catching gear on. As Casella step into the box. He's another player with a very capable bunter. And they know that because he did it last at bat. So we'll see what Romanok does. He's a very capable hitter as well, so they have to watch out for both of those. So Romanok with the pitch. This one fouled off. It's Casella ready in the box. 1-1 one, one count. Romanok with the pitch. This one misses inside. It looks like be a strike. Casella turned his back, but it's hard to see from here where the range of the strike zone is, obviously, because we're all the way out here in the outfield. As this one launched to left field, left fielder will get under it and make the catch. And Win will tag up and will score. So the first run of the game will go to Central. RBI sack fly for Jared Casella. Like that's what you said. Once you get that runner in scoring position, and you think it happened, the ball gets in the third. Casella does his job, and Central's up one nothing. Yeah, and you don't even really like the balk is the most crucial thing in that sequence because that sack fly wouldn't be possible without it. Now Romanock, the pitch, swing and a miss. Caleb McGann. The first baseman for Central. Still have a runner on first, too, the Red Devils. And yeah, we'll see what they do with that. If they're able to get a knock or if they try to steal, we'll see what they try to do. It's the pitch. That one, he called a ball. It's the count. Fall back. Began. Probably looking for a pitch to drive, obviously, trying to get that runner moving. That one grounded to Collison. Runner advanced to second, and McGann will be safe. Oh, McGann wasn't moving too fast, but Collison. I think McGann that thought throw. that he was going to be yeah, yeah. out, but Ross was unable to bring that throw in. McGann basically just gave himself up and somehow still gets to first. As now, Central. Runners on first and second, one out. So now uh, Nick Augusta will step in. And now coach will come out to talk to Romanok. We'll see if they make a pitching change or if it is just, just a mound visit here. Now obviously Central has their bullpen getting working. Schultz has been working in the bullpen throughout this inning. Yeah, Hillsborough's got someone going behind their dugout as well. Unable to see who it is, but looks like it's another righty. So we'll see if maybe they're talking this over and then just go back in as it looks like it was just a mound visit. Try and get Romanok focused and get him back in. And that's something that's crucial with coaches because you have to get your players, especially if they're emotionally like caught up especially with runners on first and second, already giving up that run. Just got to calm the pitcher down, try and get him back into the game. It's Augusta. Step into the box. Runners on first and second, one out. In the bottom of the fourth central, leading one nothing. Off the Jared Casella sack fly. So that one's grounded foul to the right side. And Romanok 
was pitching well before, but we saw we started to see some control issues as this game's gone on. Yeah, really, ever since they brought in that bunting strategy, he struggled. See, he's got to try to get out of this inning, though. Still needs two outs. As Romanok drops the breaking ball in for a strike. It's now Augusta. 0-2 count will have to fight it off. Here's the pitch from Romanok. This one hit to right field. This one will hit off the wall as now runners are rounding third. And Central will take a 2-0 lead off the Nick Augusta double. Augusta doing work for his team and himself. They're driving in that run. And still two runners second third still only one out great work from Nick Augusta yeah, and we saw those problems with Romanok through with the contact heading towards the outfield and right there we saw another hit to the outfield that one kind of got caught into the the wall a little bit it looks like the right fielder was kind of expecting a bounce off the wall but it hit right at that bottom and it just stopped Yeah. yeah, you know, I think maybe you have to do with the warning track, the wall. I don't know. I don't know. I really shouldn't have been expecting a bounce. I mean, it's a, it's a chain metal fence. It's not going to do too much, but I mean, Augusta drove it. Even, if it. even if it hit off the wall, it still probably wouldn't have had that run score. We'll see a pitching change here. Hard to see the number so far. It looks like number 10, which would be Matt Antonelli. So, Romanok's day is done, gives up two runs. The runners on base will be credited to him if they come in to score. And Romanok started off well, the, the junior for Hillsborough. And at first, it was looking like a pitcher's duel, and Central has been able to find their offense in the fourth inning. And we'll see how they're able to capitalize off this. Antonelli, last season, pitched 11 innings. Gave up 14 runs, 12 earned. Had 11 Ks. Did have 12 walks, though, and gave up 14 hits. And that put him with a 7.64 ERA. I think he looked too bad, but you could see the signs were coming in. A couple players were starting to get drive his balls pretty far, and it was just only a matter of time before the floodgates opened. Now it's a point of damage control. Try to get out of here if you're Hillsborough and get some points on, or runs on the board. Excuse me, in the next inning. Yeah, and, and Antonelli, as a senior, will probably have more of that poise, especially coming into a situation like this with runners in pretty much perfect scoring position second and third as we'll see a pinch runner here obviously for the pitcher so it will be Tommy Baz who will be or it looks like switching the runner again on second It looks like they're keeping Augusta out there on second. I think that could be a factor to the fact that Schultz is warming up in the bullpen. Maybe yeah. a choice by Coach Cousy here. As now Kyle Yasanis, the left fielder, number seven, will step into the box with runners on second and third, one out. Red Devils up 2 nothing over Hillsborough. As he'll take the first pitch for a strike. And Central will look to add even more onto this. Antonelli just trying to play damage control, as you said. The pitch fouled to the right side. So now the count will fall to 0-2. As Antonelli will try and just get out of this inning without giving up another run. Or at least try and trade and out for a run. as Isanis will step out of the box and get ready. Antonelli, the pitch, that one misses in the dirt. 
A good stop by Alex Ryling to not let that get to the backstop. Yeah, Sonic's got that walk first time now. He got a great chance for an RBI here. Sack ball, any sort of contact, probably will get a runner to score. And he's put in a tough spot trying to work out of this 0-2 count. As this one hit to right field, that one will go right to the fielder and he'll throw it in. No go to home. So runners will stay put. I think they were thinking that one was going to drop in because the runner on third yeah. was not looking like he was going to tag, not ready for that one because it was a bit shallow. Yeah, it was a little bit of a bloop, but it was a good read by Bataglis to be able to see that through, get to it, and those are the toughest situations and not really easy to tag on because the outfielder is already so, so far in, almost at the infield at some points. As now, Central will try to get more off of this 2-0 lead. So the first pitch will be taken. Antonelli, pitch misses inside. Count will go to 2 and out. Pitch once again misses low as the count goes to 3 and 0. As a walk here would bring up the top of the order and Mike Contiliano. Yeah, not who you want to see coming up. Especially putting him in a bases loaded yep. situation, not what you want to see if you're Hillsborough. And that's what they're going to get, wow. And we'll see what Mike Contiliano would do as Escamillo will walk. This is dangerous ground here for Hillsborough. Maybe an injury here to the catcher, it looks like. Something yeah, it looks like they're like looking hand, at maybe. Alex Ryling, the catcher for Hillsborough. They do have another catcher, also a sophomore, Garrett Herndon, number 25, if they had to. But hopefully he's okay and will be fine to play. As this game has been, it started out pretty slow in terms of the hitting side. Obviously the pitching started out hot with Nick Augusta with the six strikeouts he put out there. As Hillsborough players will collect on the mound. Tiliano put in a big spot for Central and one hit in the gap it could be very dangerous for Hillsborough and Contiliano definitely has the chance to do that very talented player for Central and Schultz will be moving out of the bullpen they look pretty good Schultz definitely would be a good relief reliever for Augusta if that's needed but right now Cotillion had to wait a little bit has all the ducks on the pond great opportunity for him and based on Augusta staying on second I'd, I'd have to make the assumption that Schultz will be coming into the game that pitch we'll miss outside Cotilliano with the 1-0 count And this is where it starts to get scary as a pitcher when you start to miss the zone, especially with a bases loaded situation, because you can't walk the runner. You don't have a base to send them to. As that one misses, 2-0 count, Antonelli. Unable to hit the zone so far in this at-bat. It's Contiliano. 2-0 count. Take that pitch low. 3-0 count for Mike Contiliano. And I'd expect a take here because you want the pitcher to beat himself here. And 3-1, then that's when you can be aggressive. But sometimes you get the pitch on 3-0 and it's the pitch, but that one's not it. As that one will miss. And that will bring in a run. So... 
Good plate discipline by Mike Contiliano as he'll take first. And the bases remain loaded. Two outs and Central will take a 3-0 lead over Hillsboro. Yeah, Antonelli just maybe the pressure against him. It's a tough spot to be in as a reliever. but Yeah, especially when you get put, put right into one of those high-pressure situations. There's another man. He's just got to hit the zone here. He's got to get the strikes. Yeah, and that's that's something as a pitch. That's why mound visits are so crucial, and you just got to get the player's head back into the game, try and get him to find the zone once again. Because sometimes you just kind of lose grip of of your mechanics sometimes, especially when you start to lose control. And Antonelli was definitely put in a tough spot, especially with the runners in scoring position and was forced to basically trade runs for outs. As now Soren Gregor will step into the box, the sophomore base is loaded. As that pitch will miss outside. Count is 1-0. and oh. Antonelli once again misses around the same spot as the first pitch. As 2-0 count to Soren Gregor. Misses outside again, 3-0. and Antonelli having problems finding the zone in the fourth inning. He's having a lot of problems, yeah. He, he needs, a, he needs a, a strike badly. He can't buy one. The pitch once again misses low, and Soren Gregor will take first. Central takes a 4-0 lead. Andrew Wynn will step up with the bases loaded. Uh, Hillsborough got someone else now going in the bullpen. And you kind of have to at this point. Antonelli hasn't hasn't been able to find the zone, and with bases loaded, that's way too dangerous to play with. Yeah, like I said, he, he can't buy a strike, Josh. Yeah, and something that he really needs because he has no bases to send send runners. He has to get them out or at least force them to hit it into play and trust his fielders. He misses once again, that one in the dirt. He's just been throwing a lot of pitches low, really, honestly. Yeah, he's been missing low. He missed low outside to outside, start that other yep. bat. And he low a lot. He's hitting the dirt, and the last pitches a lot of times have been getting back to the backstop. Obviously, that doesn't matter with the bases loaded walk. As that pitch misses inside. I like this call, I want to strike. I was going to say I look close. May have tipped the knob, maybe. I think I heard a little bit of a ting. Not sure though. That's excellent, exquisite hearing from Josh. This one be grounded a second. Antonelli will get out of the inning, but not before Central strikes. Central Devils will lead four nothing over Hillsboro going into the fifth inning.
So we get ready for the fifth inning. That first pitch is outside. Still Nick Augusta out there as well. It's hard to tell though because 13 and 15 do look pretty similar. This one. Oh. Right yeah. past the reach of Gregor. Central. We'll get that one in. Casella. Good job to get over there. And a nice little single for Hillsborough to start off the inning. Yeah, Gregor was very close to it though, nearly brought it in. So I believe it is Schultz just based off the motion. So yeah, that looks looks to be Ryan Schultz. You know, one pitch, fouled off. Now an 0-2 count. Time called. Hillsborough's starting to run out of time, but saw in their opening game that they were able to get an opportunity, bases loaded, so you can't ever count the Hillsborough Raiders out here. That one fouled into the backing. Foul. That one just rolled right into the hill. This one, Grand the first, McGann was able to feel that cleanly. As looks like that one was just foul. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I was going to say, it looks like he maybe just ran across, stepped on the back, but good play for him. And Schultz, two strikes now. Try to get out here. Is that one misses high? One, two. This one launched into right field. Casella under it. And he'll make the catch. It's now one out. Is it starting to get really windy here? Yeah, I'll check that for you, Josh. Looking at again, still to the northeast. First pitch, that one taken for a strike. Pitch misses low. Count will move to one and one. Still the runner on first as Schultz will look to. Maybe turn a double play, get out of this fifth inning. So this one fouled back. Count stays one and two. Pitch 
Misses high. Lindari was unable to bring it in, but the runner doesn't move. Pitch. Looks like it maybe missed outside. 3 2 yeah, count. Full here. Big spot for Schultz. And he misses the zone. Runner spring the second, even though it was just a walk. That one got to the backstop, though, so. Looks like the runner is Alex Orr. You know, I think it's been Augusta the whole time. I don't, I that might have been Augusta. It looks like it was Augusta that was pitching there. It's hard to tell from out in almost left center. Very deep, yeah. As now it'll be Schultz entering the game. So a great day by Nick Augusta able to go four and a third currently scoreless but there is that runner on base which will be accounted to Augusta if it is to come through oh. Schultz will get his warm up pitches in as Hillsborough will just try to look to get some offense going which they were unable to find against Augusta Schultz getting his final warm-up pitches in. He looked really good in the pen, I gotta say. Josh, so expect big things from him out here. He was feeling good, too. And looked good as well, so look good, feel good. Usually do us good. And he'll come into a situation. Runners on first and second, one out. Central leading 4 nothing in the fifth. Schultz with the pitch. Strike one. It looks like Avery Whitney is in the box. Alexander or Alex Orr will be the runner on second. So Whitney takes that pitch. As Ndari will have a talk, a quick talk with Schultz. So head back behind the plate. 1-1 one, one count, one out. Runners on first and second. So we'll see some action start up in the bullpen here. You know, it's Tate coming over. Maybe. I think it looks it, like it might be Ryan Lindari. Maybe. Maybe. It looks, could be Jacobus. We'll see. And Schultz will prepare the 2-1 pitch. It is Jared Jacobus, I believe. And, yeah, it is Jared Jacobus warming up in the bullpen. As we'll see. Also looks like Alex Chaco, maybe. Chaco, yep. He'll be coming over with Jack Brunetti so, as well. We'll see some bullpen action here as Central, in the later innings, will move towards the bullpen. The pitch from Schultz. That one misses. 3 1 count. They have loads of pitchers in this junior class. Jacobus being one of them that can 
that can have an impact, one really only from the sophomore class in Ryan Landari. And that one popped up in foul ground. And that one will go foul, as it is Alex Chaco. So one righty, one lefty, Jacobus the lefty, Chaco the righty, warming up in the bullpen. Played with Jacobus back in my day as well, Josh. Schultz with the pitch. And a beautiful pitch by Schultz to strike him out. Looks like batter thought it was a walk. As Andrew Advani, the left fielder, will step into the box once again. Schultz. No swing. Or looks like field umpire calls it a swing. A one count. That pitch in the dirt, a good block by Lindari. Defense behind the plate is crucial with the runners, especially. Especially what we saw earlier, how the ball set up that sack fly by Casella. Schultz misses low once again, blocked by Landari. Central up 9 1. Soft Central softball up 9 1 against Bridgewater. We'll be facing them tomorrow in that big lacrosse mouse, Josh. That's going to be big. Yeah, it's Crater, a huge Crater, game. Crater, Cordilla at it again. Central lost their two preseason games, but tough to tough to be uh, into it. Well, Brady Cordilla graduated. Collins still there. Both of them are Rutgers bound. So explain that to Mr. Johnson. And the younger ones there as well. Cameron Cordilla, he's a goalie. I think there's like three or four of them. And Vani draws the walk. Now, Koljara, the shortstop for Hillsborough, will step in with two outs and bases loaded. That pitch will miss, looks like it missed high, maybe. It's the count 1 0. Pitch from Schultz, oh, swing off, and a miss. Off speed, that was nice, hey Josh? Yeah, caught him, caught him swinging early and. It always makes the hitter look silly. This one fouled back. The count will follow one and two. As Schultz looked to get out of this jam. While Hillsborough looks to try and put up some runs with bases loaded. It's not the first time they've had bases loaded and fallen short. As they fell short with bases loaded in the Mendham game as central and Schultz will try to keep that trend going as the count will go to two and two Koljara putting together a pretty good at bat against Schultz is this one grounded towards first oh. Caleb McGann unable to bring it in and a run will score so the error by Caleb McGann will give Hillsborough a run on the board and cut the deficit to three with bases loaded still. Yeah, this field over here, Josh, you see a lot of errors on it. And that's, that's something with a bunch of fields. And every field is different, obviously. They'll have different bounces, different fields, and in game situations, you only get it once. And it's opening day, so everyone's still getting a feel for the field once again. Especially McGann, never played here before. Schultz try to get out of the jam once again. Chaco and Jacobus still warming up in the bullpen. Both looking very good. As strike there for Schultz, able to find the zone, make it a 1-1 count. As he'll try to either get a ball right to his fielder or strike him out. Tries to drop the breaking pitch, misses high. 2-1 count 
for Matthew Westcott. The DH for Hillsborough. Time called. It's both Schultz and Westcott will get their composure. He misses high, 3 1 count. Yeah, he does miss there a lot. We'll see what Kuzi decides to do here. He looks like he's sending out Nick Stout to tell him something over here. That one fouled towards the first base side. Full count now, two outs. Looks like they may be preparing either Chaco or Jacobus. Schultz, full count, trying to get out of this jam. The pitch misses inside. And Hillsboro will bring the game within two. Bases remain loaded. Wow. This is a dangerous spot as we see both Jacobus and Chaco move out of the bullpen. As now Kuzi come out to talk with Schultz. I mean, this happens two times in a row, back to back innings. Both teams trying to fight off this this uh, loaded loaded base madness, really. Yeah, and it's not like it's been one sided. Both teams have been in pretty similar situations. Both had a little bit of problems with double plays earlier, and we're seeing now the bases loaded issues as Kuzi ends his talk with Schultz. The runners will head back to their bases. His bases remain loaded, two outs. Red Devils remain with a 4 2 lead for now, but Hillsborough looking to strike and take it down. Now Graham Ross, the senior first baseman, will step into the box with bases loaded. He takes the ball for the first strike. That makes no sense. He takes the ball. He takes the ball for the first strike. <laughs> it's been a long day, Josh. Very yeah. long. Maybe the, maybe the wind has been yeah. jumbling my head around. It's getting, it's getting to you a little bit. Schultz will just try to find the zone. Not able to there as the count goes to 3-0. and Yeah, he just needs a strike here. Ryan Schultz try to get it in that zone. And we saw that problem with Antonelli when he stepped into a similar situation. Runners on base, especially with runners in scoring position. We saw Antonelli have some problems with that. And now we're seeing Schultz have a little bit of issues with that as well. Yeah, Landari going out to talk to him, just probably telling him to calm down, find the zone. Yeah, and that's that's crucial for a game like this, which has been very tight and very like close and similar has been the style of this game. They've both been playing very similar. As this one will be popped foul. I just need one strike, Schultz, to get him out of this inning. Just one strike. And this just one pitch can change everything. And Schultz with the 2 2 count just needs to get one last one. Pitch hit to left field. Yusanis coming in. Runner heading home. Yusanis' throw cut off. And Hillsborough will capitalize on the bases loaded and will tie this game up at four. Wow, looks like. He'll probably make that change from Schultz to Chaco or Jacobus now. And that is a tough thing to see. And Kuzi really was put in a tough spot because he didn't really have the time to get his relievers warmed up in time. And Schultz was put in a difficult spot and Hillsborough was able to capitalize. That's three pitchers now this inning already for Central. They will be making the switch, but... Still unknown who. And it looks like it'll be Alex Chaco. Yeah, he was throwing gas over here to the right of us in the bullpen. Yeah, and we'll see if he can get out of this bases loaded jam and keep this game tied. 
I think Kuzi just maybe should have started with Schultz, you know. He he went with Augusta, who clearly wasn't feeling it after the, after four innings, and then just bring Schultz on with two two runners already on, and now it's going to be a repeating cycle. Chaco coming in, bases low. It's tough to get oriented to a game and not make any mistakes. Yeah, and One there was could be crucial. And there was like there's always like the chance like it's always a risky one though when you make changes early but there's always the chance like right when Augusta was starting to have a little bit of control issue not the first time but maybe the second or third time he started to have control issues we saw that base runners were starting to get on and that kind of is what starts momentum is just the tiny little things that kind of build up over time yeah and we've seen especially right here all the walks have set up that big hit for Hillsborough The brother of our colleague Josh Chaco now. Alex, it's his job to get out of it. It's a big spot, especially opening day. We want to set the tone for the season. As Alex Ryling will step in after Graham Ross's two RBI single. Now runners first and second now, and that one will be fouled back. Forces at third, second, and first, so infield can go to pretty much any base. Just whatever the easiest play is for them. Yep, anywhere will do for them. And really, if, with only like with two outs, you only need the one. So, if say the third baseman he goes to his right side, just step on third, you're able to just get out of the inning. Yep, just need to get out of here. Chico, this one grounded towards first, or towards second rather, and oh, that throw no. is off, and that one will go out of play. That's very far off from Sorenger. It's his third error of the day. And the pressure is getting to Central right now. Now they're down. Now we'll have to see what the Central offense does from behind. They haven't been behind this whole game. And this will be the first time that they have to fight back this season. And in this game, it's been costly errors for Central. The throwing errors, which have cost them outs. And outs have been crucial in a game like this. As now Hillsborough... We'll have first. We'll have second and third, rather. It's Chico. Try and get out of this inning, which Central desperately needs him to do. As that one gets to the backstop, oh, no. going home, and he will score. Hillsborough will add to their lead, six-four. Now the runner will move to third. So no one saw this coming. No one saw this coming. It's been a unfortunate collapse for Central in the fifth inning. As Chico will just try to get this final out, which has been such a problem in this game, the last out of innings, as this one is popped high. McGann trying to get under it towards the fence and makes the catch. That was McGann who made that initial error that kept everything going. He's the one that ended it, but no one saw this coming. Josh Central 4 0 in preseason last year. Hunter Warren Sussex Champions finalist. In, in the, in the North Two Group Two State Champions Championship. I mean, 16 and one home record. Only lost one game this whole year at home last year, I should say. And you got to think that Kuzi is trying to motivate his team right now to try and fight back in this game, as it looks like Antonelli might stay in the game right now. He's pointing to the scoreboard over there. I mean, like one game they lost last year at home. They were a dominant force Hillsboro last year, 16 losses, lost 12 times in the conference and division. And you can't count this team out. The offense, we've seen in this game that they've been able to get the ball into the gap. And they have some speed. Now, obviously, there was a little bit of a base running mistake earlier, obviously with Escamila. But we'll see how Central is able to bounce back from that ending, from that top of the fifth and see if they can bring it back. It's been a day of mistakes, you know, 
three errors from Escamilla, maybe some coaching decisions that didn't go the way Kuzi wanted. Just things like that haven't gone the way of the Red Devils. Loads of balls, loads of of uh, walks really calls them to struggle here. Now they're down. They need to get the bats going. It's now Jimmy Lundari step into the box and try and get Central back into this game. Hillsborough is warming up an arm. It looks like it's Shailen Patel. That's an exquisite eyesight from you, Josh. And Shailen Patel is one of the juniors does pitching and infield for Hillsborough. Did not have any pitching last season, so be a fresh arm to see. Is that one taken for a ball and Lindari with a 3-0 count now. Antonelli pitch with 3-0 count here. And he'll get the strike. One caught the bottom of the zone, it looks like, as Lindari. Now with a 3-1 count, we'll try to get on base. And that one taken inside, and Ladari will take his base. Great start from the Red Devils here in this inning. See if they can build on this now. But yeah, great no. work to get a runner on first thing. Yeah, and all it takes is just a walk. You just need to get on base and start. And that kind of starts a rally as now we'll see the pinch runner come in as Ladari to allow Ladari to get ready to catch once again. Yeah, the courtesy runner for him. And it seems like it's been Tommy Baz most of this game. It's hard, can't really see the number from this angle. He was a player last year that dive back. did really well on JV Boz. I think it may be Luke Brewer actually over yeah, there. It looks like it was 27 Luke Brewer, the outfielder. Also played football this year, Josh. Yeah. Had him in my journalism class. Oh, really? Yeah, I had him with uh, Mr. McHale. Yeah, he was pretty good. Jake DeVore is in that class as well, right? Yeah, Jake DeVore was in that class. Yeah, we'll see. Obviously, DeVore plays lacrosse. We'll see him tomorrow, yeah. You see, you saw the segue there, Josh, huh? Yeah. And it was a good job by Brewer. Able to get back on that pickoff attempt. It's Casella. Looked to put up the bunt. Pulls it back. Brewer gets back before the back pick attempt from Ryling even gets out of his hand. Patel still warming up behind the Hillsboro dugout. Casello will take that one. That one in the dirt, and it's it was like right under Ryling, so it was a tough spot for Brewer, unable to advance. As a 3-0 count now. Jared Casella had the sack fly RBI to start the scoring for Central. As he'll show the bunt once again, pull it back, and take the walk. A great job by Casella. He's able to show the bunt and able to pull it back and take his walk. That's some good discipline at the plate, as now... There's got to be a record for mound visits in this game. Yeah, there's been a lot of them. And a lot of... A lot of these situations have been tough, and it's been a problem, especially with control, which is why a lot of these mountain visits have been happening. And it's the control issues have been causing the base running the base running situations with the bases loaded or runners on second and third. And we'll have to see if they make a pitching change or if it is just a mound visit here. They did have Shailen Patel warming up. And it looks like they will make the change. So Antonelli's day is done. But Hillsboro was able to get some offense behind Antonelli. And now Patel will try to strike down the threat from Central. As Central tries to bring this game back to a tie or take the lead. It's only a two-run deficit. So any opportunity with first and second especially, if they can get that ball in the gap or just get a hit, advance the runners and set up the next hitter and once again it's another righty so 
only seen righties, no lefties so far. The only lefty we've seen was Jacobus warming up in the bullpen for Central. Okay. So the show bunt, pull it back. As Patel try to get the first out of the inning, shows bunt again, pulls it back as that pitch misses high. Another difficult spot for a reliever in this game, coming in with runners on already. Yeah, and we saw with Casella's at bat that when he was showing the bun, they kind of were missing the zone. So show bun once again. We'll finally find the zone, so Patel will bring it to a 2-1 count. with runners on first and second. The pitch from Patel, that one will miss low. Riling is able to stop it. Patel prepares the pitch. We'll look back at the runner, nobody covering though. Brewer take his lead at second. The pitch from Patel. Looks like he'll get the strike there, so full count now. This next pitch is very crucial. Yeah, missed pitch and its base is loaded for Kyle Yasanis. Is this one fouled to the left side? Looks like it hit the chair fan sitting in the left left field line. Well, that is Tommy Boz over there chasing that one down like you said, Josh. Pitch from Patel misses outside. And now Kyle Yasanis step up to the plate. In a bases loaded situation. I'm a batter ahead actually I think that was McGann who was at play and now it's Augusta who's hitting well forgive you you know 400 feet away it's not easy either way it's not a good spot for Patel that pitch misses low but a great block by Ryling yeah. he's able to keep it in front of him we saw uh some a runner I think early on advanced to home on a pass yeah. ball so can easily happen again yeah, and Brewer was a pinch runner so he's obviously got some speed Augusta take that and it looks like looks like it'll be ball there pitches in that area have been a little bit on and off Obviously, umpire tendencies see it a little bit differently. As Patel, this one, grounded to second, the flip to second, throw to first, 
And was his foot off the bag as oh, he's going home and he's wow. safe. Wow. A great heads up play by Luke Brewer. That's why he's the pinch runner there. I think, I don't know if they got two to score. At least one we know. At least one we know Brewer. They've gotten those pinch, they've gotten those double plays. They've been working pretty well. And that time though, they just couldn't like, execute the throw though. And it seems like the runner in first, the runner will be on first as his foot was off the bag. We're waiting for the scoreboard to see what the official ruling is. And it looks like two runs did score. Yep. Wow. It's like that only takes one. One swing can change everything. It was heads up base running. I don't believe it was Brewer, but it was the runner runner behind him. But either way, heads up heads up playing. Great job by Kuzi to be able to pay attention there at third and guide him as Yasanis grounds that to third. Collison unable to get it and Yasanis will get in. Probably, as that one I think it was Andrew out of play. Andrew Wynn, the runner ahead of of um who was that? Uh, Brewer, because oh, he was ahead of Landari in the order. Brewer is a courtesy runner for Landari. As Yasanis will take second now. I feel like the ruling has to be at least a single on that because how hard that was hit. It's not an easy one to feel, but it could be ruled an error. Depends on the official ruling. Infield's in. I'll uh, try to prevent this run at home. Grounded towards short. Oh, great play. Great play. Throw to first. And throw is off again, and he can't keep his foot on the bag again. I mean, he just makes the hard part there look very easy, and the easy part look very was, hard there. And that was Koljara on the diving play. A great job by him, but the throw was off, and once again, the senior Graham Ross unable to keep his foot on the bag. As now, Yasanis, a runner with speed, will be on third. It's a great, it's a great job on the fielding, but the throw was off, and that's the part that would be the error. Obviously, the fielding part was not the problem, which is weird because that wasn't an easy play at all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He made that, he makes that easy part look harder than it is, and doing the the reverse on the fielding. And I think it's something to be said. You know, a lot of errors today. Second game for Hillsborough, first for Central. I think that's going to play into it. These, of course, they get grounders all the time and practice stuff like that, but doesn't compare to, to game time situations yep, with that speed. And Central will have the lead now, seven to six. As they will have a talk with Patel. And you said earlier there's a ton of mound visits today, and that's just been the kind of game it is back and forth, really tough to manage. As Patel will stay on, so just regular mound visit as first and third, one out. Logan Escamilla will step into the box. Had that double earlier, but got caught in between second and third. Sanas will head back as Patel steps off. And it is important to watch that runner on first. He won't take off the bunt, pull it back. One strike. Escamilla in this bottom of the fifth. Central leading by a run. We'll try and keep this rally going. They just ride the wave as much as they can. Pitch from Patel. Misses high. Stealing. And that throw is off. So, Logan Escamilla will get to second. So, Cotiliano set with now two runners in scoring position with only one out. A 1-1 one -one count. Pitch misses inside, almost looks like called strike. Tuliano turned his back out there. It's hard to tell as the field umpire is blocking our view of where the, the plate is. As Patel prepares the pitch, misses high and outside. 
Count will move to two and two. As Camila, the runner on second. Kyle Yasanis, the runner on third. Pitch from Patel. This one, driven by Cantiliano to left field. This one is fair. It looks like foul. <laughs> looks like the, the other white yeah, line. The other line. Because the white, the foul line kind of cuts out like yeah. about about like a quarter in. Yeah, yeah, they almost meet. It looks like, but if it it was probably looked good for a little bit, but then just the wind took it, which has died down a bit. It's been on and off throughout this game. It's picked up. It either picks up heavily or it goes away. It's Cantiliano still with a 2-2 count. Try to drive in these runs on second and third. The pitch from Patel. Cantiliano down the line. And that one's foul. So once again, hard contact from Cantiliano. So you'll look to keep this count alive and try and get even more runs, get some security, because in this game there has been a lot of runs scored off of the runners on base with bases loaded being pretty common in this game so far. It's Cantiliano. We'll drive this one. This one into left center. That one will drop. Yasanas will score. Escamilla to third. And Central will take an 8 to 6 lead and extend to a two run lead. Same thing Cantiliano did last year when they played. Hillsbury went two for four with an RBI, had a double in that game as well, but he's got that RBI today. One for three so far for him. Or I think actually one I think he walked the first time really one for one because I don't think he got a at bat. And that's all you really needed to do. You didn't really have to hit it very far to get that run in. You just had to drop it right where there's no fielders. Dropped it right between the shortstop and the outfielders. Oh, one for two because he flied out that first time at the walk and then this one. But yeah, like you said, find the holes, advance the runner, and then get the run on the board for the Red Devils. This has been a back and forth game and it really tests the skill and knowledge of these coaches to know when to take out their pitches, when to keep them in, and it looks like the shortstop, Koljara, will move to pitching. And it looks like Patel will move out to the field for him. So a little swap between Patel and Jara. And we'll see what Central is able to do with this. Soren Gregor will be the first batter to face. It's been a long fifth inning. A lot of action. Oh my god, it's been like half the game this one inning. Hillsborough was able to score off that long inning with Schultz with three pitchers, I believe, pitching the mix of Augusta, Schultz, that, and that feels like Chico. literally like an hour ago, Josh. That the top of that fifth inning. And Hunter and Central softball won their game eleven to one. They're off to a great start, huh? Two and zero. So a great start for softball, and we'll see if Central can start off their season the same. At the two hour mark now on this one, Josh. The MOB has been trying to get to that mark. High school sports have that formula knocked down to get it down to two hours, but then again, it is also two innings shorter. Yeah. It's now Soren Gregor. You like that? You like box. that pitch clock, Josh? And, uh,. Uh, I think it's good and bad, and I think if, for regular season, I think if it makes the game faster, 
because there's 162 games you play. If you can get that done quicker, it makes it more enjoyable. Makes the game, the individual games in the season, more enjoyable for fans. Yeah. But I think postseason it needs. I don't think it needs the pitch clock, as Soren will pull back the bunt there. And what's up with that new pickoff rule? Yeah, I think it's you get two times per batter, I believe, and then if you if you go t- if you try to throw it at him and you don't get him, it's a balk. Wow. So. Interesting things to see in the MLB. Do you like that one or no? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really. I feel like that's more of a question for like a pitcher. Yeah. Because I've been a hitter all my. I've, I've been a third baseman, so I know I don't really know how that really feels. As a three zero count to Soren Gregor. First and third. Pulls back the bunt. We'll move to three and one. So now we'll see if Soren Gregor looks to get aggressive. Runners on first and third. One out. Three one count. Soren Gregor hit this one foul to the left side towards the central dugout. And with an inning like as long as this, you gotta want you gotta assume that Jacobus is probably coming into the game since he was the last one to warm up. And currently there is no one in the pen. Yeah, I don't know. I mean Chaco the pitched last inning, so they have Jacobus in relief if they need. They could keep Chaco in if they if they choose to, and that's gonna be a decision that's up to Kuzi. It was technically Chaco was the last one to pitch because they both went in at the same time. Soren swing and a miss. Cotiliano will take second. That's the speed he has, wow. Another player been in the gym a lot, Cotiliano. And he's he's set for a big season for Central. Yeah, again. And he'll, as a junior, be one of the leaders of this team. Oh, no doubt, especially since the role he played last year. It's now Andrew Wynn, center fielder. Step into the box. Two outs. Runners on second and third. That ball's in the dirt. Escamilla will run for home. And he's safe. So central. To third as well. Extends the lead. Nine to six. A great job by Escamilla. Able to bounce on that. We were thinking this one's going to be low scoring. Here we are. Nine six. Yeah, those first two, three innings made it seem like nothing was going to happen offensively. And now here we are with 15 runs between both sides. Mental. Win. Takes that one low. This time stopped by Ryling. Andrew Win. Runner on third. That one outside, runner won't go. That one got to the backstop, but Contiliano opted not to run. As now, 3-0 count to Andrew Wynn. We'll see if Hillsborough can find the zone. Wynn will look to extend the lead with a hit. Is that one taken for a strike. That was just a get back pitch, try and get it back in the zone. As now 3-1, Win will look, try and continue this rally. That one misses high and inside, and Win will take his base. And we're back where we started with Lundari. Yeah, and Win was speeded on first, to definitely steal second here. Not necessarily a guarantee that he will steal, but he has the speed to. The pitch. This one hit towards short. Patel will just flip it to second for the third out of the inning. Hillsborough gets out of the inning, but not before Central takes a 9 to 6 lead going into the six.
and Alex Chico will remain on the mound. He's able to start this inning off well with a strike. He's put into a tough situation, was eventually able to get out of it. That was when Hillsborough had that big rally, which feels like forever ago, as that fifth inning felt like a year. Yeah, it, it was long, wasn't it? It's Chico now. Already has two strikes. Yeah, so you can get started with a nice out here to start this six. Chico with the pitch. This is high and outside. One and two. That one fouled towards the central dugout. Almost hit just almost hits Coach Augusta. I think I think it may have slightly. And that's the and it looked like almost like a partial swing, didn't really mean to. But that pitch. Well that one looked good. Looked good, missed outside. As I like to say in the field, a good miss. It's Chico. Looks to get the first out. That one fouled off. I wonder if Josh is here. I haven't seen him, but maybe he's here. I'm not sure. Looks like warming up for Hillsboro is Nolan Collison. As Liam Gallagher, the second baseman, will take a walk. And Jake Battaglis, the right fielder, will step into the box with the runner on first. Collison, last season, 13 innings pitched, a 2.15 ERA, 4 earned runs, 8 runs total, 8 hits, 9 Ks, 5 walks. So, 2-sport athlete, obviously really good in hockey, but also has some talent in baseball as well, so 2-sport athlete for Hillsborough. And he'll probably start the next inning as Chico. We'll try to get the first out of this inning as outs have been hard to get in this game at times. That one misses in the dirt. Good stop by Lundari. There were some defensive changes as Escamilla moved to short. Soren moves to third. And Cantiliano moves to second. This one hit, hit to Escamilla, tossed to Cantiliano, and the reach by McGinn. And I think it's like got the it. Did he? Oh. It looks like the runner's safe. Mm, I was close. They do say Ty goes to the runner, though. It wasn't necessarily a bad turn by Escamilla and Cantiliano, just a good job to beat it out. Whitney, the leadoff hitter, now set with a runner on first, one out. Pitch by Chaco, hit foul towards the central dugout. Chaco now, two strikes on Whitney, one out, runner on first. Let's see if Chaco is able to get an out or maybe even force a double play once again. Dari right in the back pick, forcing Bataglis to dive back. No throw though. Chaco now with a 1 2 count. One out in the inning, runner on first. Chaco's pitch. This one, Grunda short. Escamilla again. Flip to Cantiliano. Throw. Safe once again at first. Carmen copy of the last one. And a good job by Whitney able to run that one out. As now, it will be Andrew Advani, the left fielder, number 24 for Hillsborough to step up.
Chico looking to have a quick top of the sixth inning, which is something that Central has needed in this game. Well, both teams have. Pickoff attempt. Whitney able to get back quickly. This is Vani gets set in the box. Chico watching the runner. Pitch from Chico. This one lifted to right center. Casella will call it, and that'll end the inning. A great job by Chaco, able to work a quick top of the sixth, and Central will look to extend their lead as they have a 9-6 lead over Hillsborough going into the bottom of the sixth. As we start the bottom of the sixth, Hillsboro will leave Jara in on the mound. As Casella will lead off this inning. It will be Casella, McGann, Augusta set up for this inning. Sanis and Escamilo would be the two after that. Takes the ball low. 2-0. Casella takes a strike. Count moves to 2-1. and one. Pitch almost hits Casella. It's able to get out of the way. Little, uh, little bit of footwork there. Yeah, some matrix action. As the count moves to three and one now. Casello will take it high, take his base. So a good eye by Casella as now Caleb McGann, the first baseman, will step to the plate. First pitch misses high. Again, get back in the box. Jara with the pitch. Get the strike call. One and one. Casella, the runner on first. Fakes a steal. That one stuck behind the catcher, Riling, but Casella stays at first. Let's count two and one. McGann pops this one up. Very high. 
That one will go out of play. Count will move to two and two now. As Jara will look to try and keep this game where it is. Try and keep it at a three run deficit. McGann prepares for the 2-2. Two -two. The pitch. This is high. Count moves to full. Swing and a miss. That was a big cut there from the game. He's looking to get a drive there. It's a good job by by Jara just to drive that one, just get it right past him. As now Nick Augusta, starter in this game, pitched well for four and a third. Now Central set with a three-run lead in the bottom of the sixth. He's probably been the best pitcher of the day, Augusta. It's that one. Tried to get him with a breaking ball, missed low. Casella, still the runner on first. As he goes, steal attempt is successful. Throw was a little bit off, a good save there. But Casella is able to steal a bag. And now puts a runner in scoring position with one out. That's not what Hillsboro wants. They don't want runners in scoring position, especially with how this game has played out. Let's take that pitch. Looks like ball, so 3 0 count now. It's Augusta awaits the 3 0 pitch. He's able to make contact. But right into the catcher's mitt. Count will move to three and one. Augusta being aggressive there on the 3 0 count. Haven't seen that much in this game. A lot of people have been taking the 3 0 and finally gets the walk. And now Kyle Yasanis Sr. will step up. The runners on first and second. I would love to see the walk count. For this one, it seems like there's been like 20 walks. Yeah, there's been a lot of walks. We'll have to see when the scoring comes out on NJ.com. Isanis takes the pitch for a strike. pitch taken by Yasanas that one right behind Ryling but Casella won't move from second ball is getting a little bit past Ryling but it's not going far enough where the runners can advance Yasanas prepares for the 1-1 that one great block by Ryling there He's able to keep that in front of him he's had a lot of those there's been a lot of balls in the dirt that he's had to keep in front of him Preventing those runners from advancing. Yeah, we saw in this game now a few runs were able to come in from those balls that got passed behind to the backstop. Ooh. That one almost at his head, it forced a duck. And now Yasanis with a 3 1 count now. And takes it for a walk. And now, bases loaded for Logan Escamilla. As now, everyone will collect on the mound. A lot of pitchers been used in this game, especially for Hillsboro. We also saw Central use a few. So let me use Augusta to start, obviously, then use Schultz, and then able to get about like an inning and a third with Chaco. 
Oh, he's still going, Chico. Let's see what they do with him. And so far, nobody's been warming up so f in the pen. Jacobus and Chaco are the last ones to be in the pen, so. But that is, it seems like Chaco will probably stay in the game. Just he, he's looked pretty good. And we'll see. We'll see if they send someone over at some point. Doesn't seem like they will so far. It's runners on every base. That pitch misses low. It's now 2-0 count to Escamilla. Originally started at third in this game, it was able to slide over to short when they moved Soren to third and Cantiliano to second. And now, faced with a 2 1 count, one out, bases are still loaded. Central still with a three run lead at the moment. This one fouled to the right side. Count at two and two. As Camilla will just try to fight it off. We'll see what he does here with the bases loaded and one out. Infield is in for Hillsborough. See what do they call in the check swing? And they say he they say he went, so that'll be the second out. Wow. As now Cantiliano will step up with the bases loaded, two outs now. Yeah, hit last time out, Cantiliano. If he could do that again, get himself another RBI here. He's one for two on the day with two walks so far. And we saw him hit some hard foul balls earlier in this game. That one fouled back at the catcher. The pitch, Cantiliano takes that one. Looks like that was called a ball. It's been on and off in that spot. Seems like bottom part of the zone has been kind of the on and off range. Yeah, definitely. See him go both ways. Swing and a miss by Cantiliano. Count moves to one and two now. As Hillsborough and Jara will look to work out of this bases loaded jam and try not to give up any runs. That one's in the dirt. Going home. And he will score. Central makes this game 10 to 6 now. Well, that's Casella there that will score for the Red Devils. And runners move to second and third now. Cantiliano will look to drive these runners from second and third in now. Still a 2-2 count. That one misses low. Count will move to full. There is a free base now because of that because of that missed uh missed pitch when the Durin got to the backstop. So we'll see what happens here. Crucial pitch on this full count. Two outs base. Runners on second and third. Walk makes it bases loaded. This one. Hit down the line. Collison with a nice play. And once again, the first baseman off the bag. That time the throw was a little bit off. Would have had to really stretch to get that one. It was initially nice backhand from Collison there. Gets a throw over, but it was always going to be a difficult play. Now the Red Devils have restored their four-run lead and added one to it, make it 11-6. And now Kyle Yasanis will be the runner on third. Cantiliano the runner on first as Gregor. Will step in. Originally the second baseman, now playing third. Step up in the bottom of the six, first and third. Two outs as Central looks to extend their lead even more. Central's been able to put together some strong innings in the back end, but so has Hillsboro, so the game is definitely not over yet. As that one's in the dirt, Yusanis will run for home. And he's in standing. Now, 
Central with double the runs that Hillsborough have here in the sixth inning. It's been a bit sloppy from Hillsborough giving up these runs like this. Balls in the dirts, walks, just really being their own worst enemy. And a lot of this game has been the teams beating themselves. It hasn't really been that the other team was beating them. As this one's lifted up, center fielder Whitney gets under it to make the play and end the inning, but not before Central adds some more runs onto their lead to now have a 12 to 6 lead going into the top of the seventh as Hillsborough will try to fight back. We get ready. Chaco will stay in the game for the top of the seventh, looking to close this game out and pick up the win in this game. He's got a good run cushion, six run lead, but you never know with baseball. No run is no lead is safe with how many runs have been scored in this game and how the game's played out. This one lifted up. And a, a great play there by Andrew Wynn. Oh, it was a tough one to read as Contiliano, Casella, and Wynn were all moving in on that and was able to make a great almost diving play there. Yeah, he almost dove as he was catching it, but still beautifully done from the center fielder. And a great first out as Chaco worked the next batter. That one misses for a ball. Chico's pitch. This is up and in. It looks like the so count will be 1-1. One, one. Chico. This one hit right to Contiliano for the second out. Chico with two quick outs in the top of the seventh as Central is one out away from starting the season 1-0 and with a 12-6 win possibly. Jacob's pitch finds the bottom of the zone. Hillsborough down to two strikes now. This one grounded to Contiliano. Fields it cleanly. Throw to first. Throws off. But is able to get the tag. A great job by McGann. And Hunter and Central will win this game 12 to 6 against Hillsborough. A great job by Central. Able to come back in that fifth inning after the struggles the struggles they had with all their pitching and the errors, but able to work out of it, able to fight back and win this game 12-6. to What did you see throughout this game, Tyler? You know, it wasn't the uh, best game in terms of pleasing on the eye, but most point for Central, home opener, playing at your own, 
on your own field, just trying to get the win and get the momentum going into that big game against Rich tomorrow. Have some issues with fielding and pitching. Hopefully they can get those ironed out, but the bats look pretty good. Got on base a lot. So, like what I've seen from the Red Devils, but just need a bit more if they are to reach their goals they set this year. And Central with a great start to their season. They'll start off 1-0. and And that'll be it for our coverage of 100 and Central Baseball on HCTV.